Yeah. Hello, my name is Nyabai Gatbel and I'm here today to have a conversation with these cool humans. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Lual Garang and I'm a youth advocate for African youth. I'm Luel, Luan Garang I'm a youth ambassador and the new Miss Africa 2017. So yeah, as uh, we here in Calgary, Canada, and we're really interested in discussing some of the problems that African youth face around here mm -hmm. and back where we come from, from Australia. And yeah, we'll be seeing some of the challenges. I want to know your perspective on how you, two black girls growing up in Australia and Canada, how did you, how did you go about it in high school? You want to go first? No, you can start. <laughs> um... It was interesting because I felt like there were so many challenges because <coughs> because of the color of my skin, my gender, coming from South Sudan, like having a refugee background. There are you've been typecast by the education system here, so I felt like every time I did good educationally, I was like the token child. <laughs> because apparently, I guess we're so troubled that if one of us did anything decent, it's like oh my god, not all of them are bad, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a challenge because. One, there's language barrier, you know, culture shock, you the thing called race, all these issues and all these other isms that are prevalent in the society. And just being a young kid and trying to just do well academically because you know your parents tell you, hey, you're yeah. in this country, get an education, become yeah. the best you can be. So it's very, um, it, it's just, I felt tokenized just because. I wasn't willing to put up with them the way they did other kids. So is it the same situation it's in similar. Australia as well? It's similar. I mean, when I came here, it was a bit challenging as well, just like you. Mm -hmm. um, I did face some of um, difficulties, such as the skin of my color. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to a school where I was the only black person um, that was in Sydney. Oh. And really, I I was having trouble to choose identity, like who, like because there were so many white people around mm -hmm. me. So I was like, all right, so I'm the only black person, so I had that low self-esteem mm -hmm. because I feel like, all right, since I'm the only black person, they look at me like, all right, mm, your skin color is kind of off, you know? Like, I feel really bullied as well. Yeah. So I became that person that was very defensive. So if anyone comes to me, I acted all cool and gangster. So that's <laughs> that's who I was <laughs> at, at that time. At least she's honest. <laughs> I was that type type of person I would wear a hoodie and if any any person come in a kawaji come to me like a white person I'm like oh, yo what's up like you know I'll act so defensive because I I built that you know kind Barrier. of from yeah because so I feel you most likely had to get your identity through say TV or any other black person's type of yeah exactly of ways, right yeah exactly it was pretty mixed mm -hmm. like it was really mixed because I couldn't define myself because all of them were defining me who I was mm, and coming from that deep. yeah so well, coming from that background the same to us like growing yeah. up in Africa we had to listen to a lot of people and we thought that that was the coolest thing you could wear bandanas in your head yeah my like big belly jeans. <laughs> and it yeah, was yeah. just a, I later realized I didn't know it at the time when I was doing it but later on I realized that was just that was an identity crisis and we used yeah. to call ourselves n-word when we like <laughs> exactly Africa. it was so cool n-word was, 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 was actually like cool for a cool dude yeah like, exactly it, it was cool. but we yeah. didn't know Tragic. we didn't know that like, there was somebody else out there that was getting bashed with it so <laughs> exactly. that, that is the situation we were put into yeah and yeah and like what i've done as um someone who worked with the youth in australia what i've realized is that we as the people try to solve the problem we don't actually get to know the problem that mm, the youth are facing from exactly. your perspective yeah i can come here with a project thinking that oh i want to help youth get the get the job but i don't really know why don't they have the job what is it what is the mm. real problem so what we have realized is that we go down and sit with them in a group and ask them that what problems are you actually facing and they write them down on a board and they come they, they contribute themselves and once you start working from that point of view, you're most likely to know what is the situation with them, rather than just imposing the, the, the solution on them. Yeah, Do I you think guys have any other experience of like how the youth here in Calgary? Uh, I think every I think every youth has like this city potential, mm -hmm. and they kind of they kind of have an idea of what they want to do. Yeah. But what's really missing is that support system. Yeah, yeah. To, exactly. make, to make that seed become a plant. Yeah, so I think that's what they need here in Calgary. I'm pretty sure same with Australia. It's like 
we we all have like an internal compass so we kind of know we kind of have an idea what we want out of life mm -hmm. but it's not having the support system or the resources or the necessary thing that we need to self-actualize i think we do have the resources it's just that we're not actually having that like we're not taking the step to get that resource because i think as a youth we you really need to go out there nobody's going to come and say hey wake up go out there you need to actually take a step but then within that i do agree with you we need that support as well that support system i, I think it has to be realized in the Sunni community because i feel outside of the community there's so much that the country in which we live in offer to us right but at the end of the day it's like a, it's a holistic thing so you want your family your community you want them to back you up and so i think the community has to help the Canadian or even Australian government back up the youth because they're doing what they can, what mm. they have. The and other, have the other trouble that I see with the, the parenting part is that they're actually doing the best they can mm -hmm. to be able to help those youth. So if they are working every day, say for five days, right, there is not enough time to do the supervision at home. They might leave the kid with the uh, yeah. oldest kid in the family. We are not. We don't have those mighty resources to be able to drop our kids early in the morning. We might be doing some other odd jobs. Say you are working around five a.m., yeah. finishing at daytime, and all your sleep is messed up. So you're focusing more on how can you get food to the table, provide for their fees, but not be able to like drop them at school. That should be like a generational thing. Like the next generation that will come should be the one to solve some of those problems. And again, we need to look into other communities that have come here before us. Yeah, we have to learn from others. And, and yeah, and we have to know exactly how did they solve the problems of this youth. They went through all of these. Yes, they have. Yeah. So yeah, those 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 are some of the trouble that I find with the youth. And um, and yeah, so any other any other youth problem that you guys see that we could really look at? I think the concept of self. Or the mm. mental, you guys, you guys thought mental, about the mental, mental, mental health as well. That's part, that's, um, part, that's part of it too. That's huge. Um, mm. So this idea of like how you were talking earlier about like, who are you? Mm. How do you define you? Because if, if, if our young people are not careful, they will have the world and the racist ideology out there painting a picture of who they are. Mm. That's not real. And then silencing their own voice and who they are. So I guess my question would be, how do we encourage self-exploration where one can have a very strong identity on their own? Oh, wow. That's a very good yeah. one. One thing I know for sure is that someone really needs to see themselves out there being played by a person that looks like them. Yeah. So one example that I can give is like one of my friends right now in um, Perth, Australia. He is a South Sudanese lawyer. And once a kid, I'll give you an example. We, were, we went to the church with him to go introduce him because he's standing to be the next uh, South Sudanese community leader. So a young girl that is in year 11 walked straight up to, to us before the church finished. And I don't know where that kid got that drive and I was really moved by it. And he came and talked to her, how did you, how did you get to be able to, not only is he working as a professional lawyer, he has a farm. So that is something, when somebody wow. sees something that looks like him being played out there, exactly. I think it could how like define who you, who you who you think yourself to be? I think the community has to play a role as well, like mm -hmm. our community. So, if they show that kind of identity, like honestly, I really kind of you know admitted that I had I had a culture, so I embrace my culture so much now. And then what it was before in high school times and everything, yeah. because I saw out there my culture was amazing because I saw some of the role models and how community, you know, kind of are incorporating all of these things like culture, culture dance and just having that beauty of our culture. So yeah. if how you see that all these things are happening, that's your identity. You know, no, that's, 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 that's really who you beautiful. are. Wow. No, yeah. I think you're right. I feel like what helps me as well is understanding my culture yeah. and understanding my own existence when it comes to that. Do you guys speak your language? I speak my language. Can you say hello? Mala. <laughs> about you? Lloydie. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we no, do. No, it's yeah. a, it sounds and like language it's not a big as well. deal, but it's, it's yeah, a big thing. Yeah, language um, is just, yeah. I, like, I guess when I was little, going through this, I guess, transition, of, <clears throat> I used to listen to a lot of, um, okay, like, like you know, the early 2000, uh, mm -hmm. that's when John Gering and Nirek Machar, they were like, this is when you're a little kid. Like, they were, mm -hmm. I actually looked after them. Mm -hmm. Like to me, they were self-news men killing it out there in the international. <laughs> you know, literally, that's how 
that's how it was. Like, that's how I looked at them, you know? Mm-hmm. And that, even then, I'm like, I want to be them. Like, it's, it's weird, but I'm like, yeah, I want to be like those guys. Because to me, they're South Sudanese, and they represented something in, in, in international politics. Or yeah. it's just, it's not even about what you do. It's the idea that you're willing to do what you want to do, and then you don't know who's looking up to you and saying, hey, if you can do that, maybe I can go do that, because you kind of, like, Hate the way. Exactly. True. And um, the other thing is that they, the, the people that are already there in the limelight that are also South Sudanese, you know, they also have a part to play in um, yes, projecting do. like who who will really are as people. So somebody like Luol Deng and, you know, there's a young boy that just went to NBA and he mm-hmm. was actually a perp high school kid, wow. Don McKell. And looking at those people can can validate you see how South Sudanese kids want to play basketball it's from what they know it's, and most yes, the other ones exactly. want to model as well and then modeling. because they know that those girls have also done it exactly. and the way I look at that is um, that that looking at yourself from the perspective of a person that is like you this is really powerful no like I don't know about y'all but 2017 is mm-hmm. like it's so often for the youth like we have Young people having their own makeup companies, clothing mm. companies. It's amazing. Like, yeah, um, there's a lot of people coming out. So many businesses yeah. from like it's it's just it's showing yeah. it's showing the little kids like yo like it's possible. you can yeah, do this anything is you want to do like we, yeah. we have a support system. So I think for me, I feel like the future is going to be really really bright. Yeah. And I, this is where um, the older folks have to back us up and say, listen, the young people are they're trying their best exactly let's let's back them up the resources and support so they can further along the and activity. here is the part that sound, it will sound like a cliche but people have to be like really lifelong learners as well yeah if you have to make a cutting edge with anything you have to learn to read seriously not just read this book that has been entitled to you for 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 school but read beyond that if you're really interested in